And we're back. Hey, I'm Nathaniel Fawson. I'm a professional archaeologist. I have been for 10 years. And this channel is dedicated to the archaeology of North America, particularly in the region that we call the Eastern Woodlands. Now, today I wanted to talk about something that I didn't get to in the last zooarchaeology video, which is called Zooarchaeology by Mass Spectrometry, or Zooms. Um, basically, the way this method works is that bone is made up of uh, hydroxyapatite and collagen, about 30% collagen, so there's a lot in there. And collagen is made up of peptides. And different animal species are going to have kind of different peptide recipes to their bone construction based on uh, just kind of their evolutionary history. So goats are going to have different peptide recipe to cows, which are going to have different recipe to say like deer or elk, things like that. And certainly, of course, turkeys and uh, birds are going to have very different bone collagen recipes. So we can take a chemical called trypsin and use it to uh, break down the bone collagen from our samples into these peptides and then run them through what's called a time of flight mass spectrometer. And basically what this does is that because each of these peptides have a different mass, if we suspend them in a vacuum tube and shoot them down the end of it, they're all going to get there at different times because the same energy is applied to them and the, uh, the mass provides the inertia that causes each of these uh, you know, peptide groups to arrive at the collector at the end of the time of flight mass spec um, at, at different times. So what you end up with is kind of a, kind of looks like a barcode. Um, I'll put a picture up here. And we can then look at particular sites along that grid or that graph rather and uh, match them with the known kind of collagen peptide fingerprints of various animal taxa, various species. And this is a lot of really important implications. One, it means that we're no longer required to only identify animals based on morphological features, the shape of the bone. It used to be the only real alternative was DNA testing, but that's extremely expensive. And also DNA doesn't preserve nearly as well as the bone collagen. There's just not enough of it. There's not, well, there's not nearly as much of it. So this allows us the other thing, the great thing about Zooms is that it's extremely inexpensive. You can feasibly, um, for you know, three hundred dollars, go through hundreds of samples. So for very small bone fragments that are otherwise unidentifiable, you can now run these things and get um, get pretty good identifications on them, um, as long as they haven't been contaminated and burning hasn't destroyed all the collagen and things like that. Now what this also means is that um, we're able to go through with artifacts that have been heavily modified and all of their identifiable um, morphological features have been removed, say for things like bone hairpins or um, bone spear points and other projectile weapons and, and other kinds of tools and identify what animals they're coming from. Because a lot of times it's just kind of assumed, oh, they're probably from deer or probably from bear or something like that. Usually it's in my region, it's assumed that they're deer. Now, there was a study by uh, a woman named Kristen McGrath and a bunch of her colleagues on a collection of Iroquoian bone projectile points. And they were similarly all assumed to be, have been made out of deer or elk or something along those lines. But when they did the zooms on them, what they found was that um, some of them were made of bear, some of them were made of all kinds of other animals, some of them were actually human. Um, and this is great because we can now use a non-destructive version of this and identify human remains that were previously unidentified and get them repatriated to the uh, tribal groups that they belong to um, or who have stewardship over, over that region. Um, the non-destructive method involves a PVC eraser. You basically just run the PVC eraser over the, um, the bone sample. It picks up a, uh, a, a certain amount of that collagen because the collagen is fibrous and so it it pulls off some of those strands and you can run the um and you can run that sample through the time of flight and 
get almost as good, not quite as good, but almost as good resolution and results as you would get uh, if you actually took a, a small piece of the bone itself, crushed it up, and ran it through the time of flight mass spec. So uh, it, it also doesn't only work with bone samples. You can use it on anything with collagen in it. There was a study that I saw that involved um, old uh, medieval Bibles, because they're made out of animal skins, looking at different regions around Europe and what animals were the preferred species for the making of these, uh, these sheets of, of vellum. And some regions were much more cattle oriented, others were more goat oriented, others were mostly making them out of sheep and so on and so forth. So it's a really cool method that um, has only come about in the last probably 10 years that really expands our ability to cheaply identify bone material that we otherwise wouldn't be able to identify. Um, that's all I've got for this one. If you have any questions, feel free to ask those down in the comments section. Uh, and as always, thank you for watching.